Every day, a grown tiger would emerge at the entrance of an Indian military regiment, roaring loudly. The tiger would walk slowly, as if trying to catch the soldiers' notice. The residents of the camp were unsure of what was going on. Although they had been taught to approach and battle a tiger, it was not one of their expected tasks. Several soldiers had had nasty encounters with these animals in their home areas. The troop speculated about the tiger's motivations and why it visited the camp on a daily basis. Some speculated that the tiger was looking for food and scouting a possible entrance through the surrounding fence inside the base. Anxiety pervaded the camp, to the point where the unit commander felt obligated to act. He couldn't stand by and watch his people suffer in the presence of the predator, facing potential dangers on a daily basis. As a result, the commander decided to contact a biologist in a nearby town. The biologist was astonished to receive a call from the military because aiding with such an odd problem was not part of his normal duties. Nonetheless, he promised to visit the military base and assist the beleaguered personnel. When the zoologist entered the military unit, he sensed the troops' dread and realized something was wrong. He was led to the commander's quarters, where he was briefed on the situation, a fully grown tiger patrolling the military unit's perimeter every day. The scientist couldn't believe what he was hearing because such behavior was quite unusual for a huge cat. Nonetheless, he agreed to assist. He began chronicling the tiger's activities with the help of brave soldiers, noting the times when the animal emerged from the impenetrable Indian jungles. The zoologist came to a daring conclusion after two days of observation. When he returned to the commander's quarters, he revealed his findings, the tiger was attempting to attract the attention of the men and did not pose a true threat. The biologist sought some time to devise a solution to the problem. The commander waited patiently, and as the sun fell behind the woods, the zoologist revealed his idea. He intended to be accompanied by a group, but the passage looks to be unfinished. The bravest and toughest troops joined him in his pursuit of the tiger. The commander was first apprehensive, fearing the potential risk to his soldiers based on the opinion of an apparent expert. When word went throughout the camp that a zoologist was gathering a group of men, several volunteered. They were driven to help because they believed that monitoring the predator was the only way to get the tiger to leave the camp. As a result, the commander agreed. The zoologist described the potential dangers they would face, and the men promised to follow his directions while standing ready to provide protection if necessary. The biologist emphasized the significance of keeping cool when tracking the tiger in the dense and vivid jungles, emphasizing the importance of remaining calm. As dusk fell, the men took their assigned places, armed with and provisions to last them several days. As the light reappeared in the sky the next day, the tiger emerged from the forests and made its way to the fence, where it resumed its methodical pacing along the cage. The low growls alarmed the soldiers, but the naturalist soothed them. The tiger retraced its ways into the jungles after about an hour, indicating the start of the group's risky quest. The men began tracking the striped cat while keeping a safe distance from the beast. As they moved deeper into the lush jungles, the men encountered severe humidity. The tiger occasionally came to a halt and turned toward the group, noting their presence without causing any disturbance. Every time it turned, it appeared to confirm that they were still on the trail. The tiger vanished as darkness fell, forcing the men to set up camp warily, taking turns monitoring for any threats. The tiger was nowhere to be discovered when the sun rose the next day, leading to disappointment and misgivings about the zoologist's judgment. Some believed the tiger had lured them into its hunting grounds. The zoologist, remaining calm, assured the men of his tracking abilities, and the squad went off to look for clues. They soon found the tiger's tracks and followed them until they heard a loud roar. Pushing through the bush, they came to a torrent river, which had been swelled by recent monsoon rains. As the traces ended at the river, indicating that the tiger had swum over, the naturalist got concerned. This caused anxiety because tigers are known to be good swimmers, 
but crossing a stormy river sounded perilous. In a fit of elation, one of the troops pointed out the tiger, who was standing near a rocky spot degraded by rivers, upstream. The group persisted in their pursuit. They moved up the riverside in search of a safe crossing location. They approached slowly after discovering a flat, stony route leading to the tiger. The closer they came, the further up the river the tiger withdrew. When the zoologist reached the other side, he was determined to pursue the fleeing tiger. The soldier's pleas, on the other hand, prompted him to turn back, initially ignoring them until their constant cries drew his attention. Soldiers pointed to the rocks where the tiger had been observed previously, and two guys began removing stones. When the zoologist returned, the soldiers informed him that they had heard cries from beneath the rocks. They worked together to discover what was concealed beneath the pile. A cavity was revealed as one of the soldiers successfully dislodged one of the last trapped stones. When the biologist shined his flashlight into the dark abyss, he saw four eyes and realized they were tiger kittens trapped there. He directed the soldiers to clear the remaining stones as soon as possible, verifying the presence of two little tiger cubs in a cave-like configuration. It became clear that the tiger was a female rather than a male. She had apparently left her babies in the cave while she went hunting, and the cave was later flooded by the river, trapping the cubs. She sought assistance from soldiers stationed a few kilometers away when she was unable to liberate them herself. Her goal was now clear to the soldiers. She hadn't come to the military camp for food or to cause trouble, she was looking for help. The cubs were gently retrieved from the cave and deposited on the ground, away from the raging river. They realized the mother tiger had spotted her cubs and was eager to approach them when they heard a tremendous roar upstream. They fled across the river, patiently awaiting the mother and her pups' reunion. The males were taken aback by what happened next. The mother quickly approached her tiger cubs and began licking and tending to them. Throughout their reunion, the cubs were fed and cared for by their mother. The troops bid farewell triumphantly knowing that the tigress was satisfied and her cubs were protected. When the commander returned to the camp, he thanked the zoologist, and the entire camp celebrated the win. As a result, the tiger stopped visiting the camp, and the soldiers knew that the mother and her babies were safe. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. The bear pleaded with her in her house. Why? This is a story about how a hungry bear entered a human dwelling for a treat. You can't predict what amazing thing is going on here. This story happened a long time ago when I finished my studies at the graduate school. I and my friends went to the Taga region of Siberia, which is known for its conical forests consisting mainly of pine, spruce, and cedar. My father's friends at the time had relatives in one of the villages on the banks of the river, which made us visit that beautiful charming village. We didn't have a mobile phone. We had to communicate with the villagers, who told us the location of the relative's house. After a long time, we finally found it. When the three guys entered the house, we found an old man living alone there. His children had traveled and left him to live alone. He was so glad we visited him. He hugged his grandson, Alexei. The rustic wooden house was very beautiful. This grandpa kept everything in order, and there was a good smell emanating from it, which made us suspect that there was a woman in the house. When Alexei asked his grandfather why his grandmother was absent, the grandfather told him that she was in the hospital because she had been attacked by a bear in the woods and had been seriously injured. She was recovering. Grandpa's words made us feel very panicked and we were sure that our task would not be easy. Grandpa brought us a meal and invited us to dinner with him. Then we drank tea and stayed talking to each other. The grandfather explained to us the environment and the kinds of animals that exist in the forests near his home. He advised us not to go to the forest when he knew that we wanted to camp in the forest, especially on days when it was snowing. He was a forest guard and a skilled hunter, 
but his old age made him refrain from going to the forest. We asked Grandpa to tell us how Grandma was attacked by the bear. The grandfather said that in that year, the forest did not produce wild fruits and mushrooms as before, so the bears didn't find food. They started approaching the residents. They started attacking people and animals, causing the leaving of some dogs in the village. People were also looking for food. One day, my grandson set off with Alexei's cousin. They went to the neighboring village with my truck to get wheat, and we left my wife, Cora, alone at home. I advised my wife not to leave the house while we were away from the house. I knew that the bears would approach the house. I knew if a bear did show up, it wouldn't hesitate to attack humans. I promised her that I would return before dark. When my grandson and I arrived at the village, we went to a farm there and put the bags in the truck. But something unexpected happened on the way back. The truck had a malfunction that made it stop in its place. Then my grandson, Sergi, returned to the village to get a mechanic. I stayed with the truck. When the mechanic came and checked the car, he told me I had to go buy a spare part in town, and he asked my grandson to stay with him to help him dismantle the engine. We spent a long time fixing the car. It got dark, and we were still with the mechanic, lighting him with the flashlight and anxiously waiting for him to finish fixing the truck. Grandma Cora is very anxious to find out we haven't come home yet. She went out to the yard and kept waiting. After taking food for the dog that we kept inside the stable to guard the livestock from the attacks of wolves and bears, she left the door open. When she returned home, she found a bear in the kitchen looking for food. Cora was terrified and started screaming. The ferocious bear turned to her and began to follow her. She entered the bathroom, closed the door, and remained there screaming for help. There was no one to help her because our house was isolated from the rest of the villagers, which scared her. The bear kept wandering around the house and looking for food, but it did not find any, which made it more agitated. It immediately returned to the bathroom door behind which the grandmother was hiding. It began to hit it, trying to break it. All grandma could do was pray, meanwhile, my grandson and I finished repairing the truck and hurried back home. When we arrived, we started unloading the truck. Suddenly, we noticed that the door of the house was open. I quietly approached and heard a strange sound coming from inside. Then I asked my grandson to wait for me there, and I went to find out what was going on. When I got into the kitchen, I found that the furniture was broken, and the chairs were lying on the floor. I immediately realized that an animal had slipped into the house, and it was probably a bear. My only concern was my wife, and I kept praying for her, which made me very nervous. When I heard the screaming, I immediately went into the bathroom. I found a giant bear had managed to break the bathroom door, which was about to devour Cora. She was shaking and praying to God to keep the bear away from her. Then I hit the bear with a wooden chair, stood in front of it to attract its attention, and retreated back. The bear turned to me and started to follow me, so I ran outside and asked my grandson to call out to my friends who were not far from me. I've been luring the angry bear, trying to make it forget about my wife, who came out of the bathroom and hid elsewhere. But it returned home and kept looking for her. It found her in the kitchen and attacked her, causing serious wounds in different parts of her body. Although I fought with it and hit it hard with the stick that was in my hand, the bear was about to hurt my wife. Luckily, my four friends arrived. They had weapons in their hands and were ready to attack the bear. As they hit it in the hind legs, it fell to the ground. After it collapsed, the hunters and I pulled the gigantic bear aside. Then we took my wife from the kitchen, she was in pain. We immediately put her inside the truck and comforted her. My friends helped put the bear back into the forest. I was so nervous that I forgot I had a rifle in the truck. I kept hitting the angry bear with a stick in my hand. Fortunately, my wife recovered in the hospital. 
When I got back to my house, I found my friends waiting for me and checking on me. Then they left with my grandson, who went to Medina the next day because he had to go to university. The three of us stayed, watching Grandpa in astonishment. Grandpa advised us not to go to the forest and camp there because it is full of hungry and angry bears that attack everything they find in front of them. We had no other choice but to listen to what the grandfather said, and we stayed wandering around that small village. Sometimes we went to play in the forest during the day, skiing and playing there. We also had barbecues with the grandfather and went to visit the grandmother in the hospital until she got out of it. That's all about this story and now let's watch another story. Since childhood, Vaya passionately fell in love with fishing. His father taught him all the wisdom and skills of this wonderful hobby. Every weekend, they went away from civilization to remote places to catch the biggest fish. They never line or set up with a fishing rod anywhere in the city. It's not interesting for them because fishing in a remote lake or river is a completely different experience and they can enjoy it for a couple of days. When the father got older and his legs were no longer the same, he stopped traveling with the Vaya. However, Vaya never changed their traditions. He traveled halfway across Russia and caught a wide variety of fish. Then he took pictures of them. But his biggest passion was catching new species of perch. This is a challenging fish which is powerful, cunning, incredibly, beautiful and tasty. It requires a dozen of knowledge, skills and endurance to catch it. That's a momentous day. He decided to get to places where he had never been before. Every real fisherman should visit it at least once in his life. That is Corella. After receiving approval from his wife, he collected the equipment and packed it into his SUV and started off. He drove hundreds of kilometers and he got there at night. There was very little time left until sunset. Vaya managed to set up camp before dark and kindled a fire. It's due to his great experience. He decided to leave early in the morning. When he got to the place with the beginning of the intense cool, he was inspired. He took all the necessary equipment and set off. The journey he went through was very bumpy. He passed the river. It's not the beautiful and peaceful riverside. After an hour, Vaya passed through the tall wet bush and arrived at his destination. The river attracts numerous fishing enthusiasts with its majestic power. On this coast, it is sometimes cold and sometimes tough. Vaya stood there with his mouth open and took a picture. He'd seen a lot of things, but this picture left a mark on his memory forever. The man began to settle down and set up with a fishing rod. Vaya dumped the bait into the river by the middle of the day. It attracted a decent amount of crowd. He never took too much bait because there was no control in him. Therefore, he decided to go back to the camp and go fishing. He could go to the river and catch something else. Nature must be respected. He returned in the late afternoon and walked slowly, enjoying the fresh air that can only be felt in a cold forest. An incredible thing happened. He lit the fire and put the cauldron on the fire. Vaya was already going to cut a flat fish in a bag a couple of meters from the tent. Suddenly a large bear came out of the forest. It walked slowly towards the camp. It looked around and sniffed everything around it. This is where it usually goes. People often avoid meeting bears like this. The bear was not aggressive apparently because it's just looking for something tastier than Vaya. Vaya found it and it began to step back. He didn't make sudden movements and run so as did not provoke this aggressive beast. After getting to a safe distance, he began to observe the bear with undisguised enthusiasm. He went up to the bear and the bear smelled the fish. It tore the fish within a second. The man silently watched its rough behavior. Finally the bear left with great pleasure after eating it. It left Vaya with nothing. He said ironically that at least he was still alive. After returning home from that trip, he told this story to his wife. 
she did not allow her husband to go on such trips again. Of course, it did not work. It's impossible for him to stay at home. A month later, Vaya was packing his things for another trip. Everything was usual and in accordance with the usual practice. After he got there, suddenly the man fell and broke his leg. Fortunately, he was well equipped as he walked constantly alone and was able to call for help by satellite phone. Vaya was rescued and taken to the nearest hospital. He had the fracture. The result was not optimistic. The doctors did not give comforting forecasts whether he'll be able to fully recover or not. His rehabilitation lasted lasted a year and a half. He did everything possible to get up on different procedures in the exercise rehabilitation centers as soon as possible. A lot of money and effort were spent. He's fully recovered and could do something he loved finally. However, another question arose. Shall he go fishing after such a long rest? It was decided to repeat the trip to the same place in Corella. The nature there is fantastic. But he didn't catch a fish this time and he returned empty-handed. Vaya decided to go to another place. They're similar, so that he would have time to enjoy the nature. He though that those are the gifts that nature gave him. Everything was fine when he arrived at his destination. His fishing trip was as successful as ever. There was the smell of tea in the forest and the reflections swayed by the fire. This was an incredible life. He had fresh trout soup every day. On the second day, Vaya decided to consolidate his success. At six o'clock in the morning, he briskly walked to the place he's already fallen in love with. The birds are singing and the flowers are fragrant there. The river generously shares its wealth with skilled fishermen. Therefore, he can catch plenty of fish. He turned back to camp and decided to go back early. Therefore, he would have time to load all his equipment into the car before evening. In the next morning, he would go home peacefully and without any fanfare. When he came back, he put the cauldron by the window on the fire. Suddenly he heard a loud noise nearby. It was tragic. Vaya said loudly, no. He seemed to realize what was happening. He crawled to the nearest sleeping camp. The bear entered this camp and it's the same bear. It stole all the fish from him years ago, and Vaya recognized it at first sight. This time it behaved completely differently. It's not interested in fish. The bear left the camp and turned around, which appeared to invite the man to follow it. Vaya didn't know what moved him at that moment but he went downstairs and followed that huge beast cautiously. They reached the bank and the bear backed away, continuing to howl mournfully. At first, he didn't understand what the animal wanted, but suddenly, he saw a little bear limping and crawling with a paw. It was so poor. He spat on the ground in distress and approached the cub cautiously. He kept looking at its mother while the huge bear looked calm and did not move. As the man got closer, he saw that there was a large piece of debris. What's more, there's a lot of blood mixed with mud on its paw and around it. Vaya cautiously extended his hand to the frightened cub. The bear cub was very frightened but it did not resist. He grabbed the cub's paw and pulled out the shards that went through its paw. Although he was very tired and frightened, he knew that the mother bear had mustered up the courage to ask him for help. The bear stared at the young man as if to thank him. Then it turned around and disappeared with the cub. Thank you for watching.